Argentine farmer's shun peso for a bag of beans is the Reuters article from November the 4th, 2002. Argentine farmer's shun peso for bag of beans by Damien Vroklavsky, Sunday, November 24th, 2002, by Reuters magazine, Buenos Aires, Argentina. In Argentina, where economic chaos has given birth to 11 different currencies issued by cash-hungry local governments, farmers have found a bushel of soybeans is worth more than a bank bag of banknotes. And every one of those 11 currencies is helping out a bit, as long as they can all be pegged to the time standard used by the trucking groups. So, Reuters says, in a bankrupt country where a massive debt default and a freeze on bank deposits have made credit non-existent or prohibitively expensive, farmers in what is still an agricultural powerhouse have found a currency strong enough to buy a car or even an apartment, grains, and in huge amounts. So, saying they've found a currency disguises the fact they created their currency themselves. And it misleads that the currency is grains, when it is receipts for tons of grains. Some of their time cutty toasts at the markets are based on chickens, so why doesn't the reporter say that their new chick currency is chickens? So Reuters, newspaper and TV ads invite farmers to, quote, make your harvest worthwhile, unquote, by buying trucks, tractors, and agro chemicals with their agricultural output, now valued in safe haven dollars on the international markets, while the rest of the country has to make do with devalued pesos and weak provincial currencies. Now, they say the new currency they buy trucks with is their agricultural products, valued in safe haven dollars. No explanation what a hey, safe haven dollar is. Reuters. Farmers are responding to the invitation by the shipload. All they have to do is transfer several tons of soy, wheat, or corn to the companies selling the product they want. A transfer note. How the transfer paperwork is done is not explained in the article. I can imagine a farmer walking into a Ford dealership with a hundred bags of grain. The reason for money is to avoid having to tote bags of grain all over the place, though you'd never know it from reading the article. Or it sounds like a farmer just sends in a transfer note to a company for their product. Farmer's personal tokens, a farmer's jeu, and that's Jardin uh, d'Echange Universel from France. Reuters, you see a lot of new trucks around here. Works. Now they cost a lot fewer kilos, pounds of soy, than they did before, and they're cheaper too. It's a good time for the export sector, said Daniel Martinelli, a medium-sized soy producer in Cordoba, a main farming province. And I said, without having to pay the banker middleman, everything costs the farmer less product than before. The general effect of let's. Reuters. For many living in the shadow of Argentina's worst ever crisis, archaic bartering systems have become a more preferable way of doing business than using the sophisticated but unstable financial tools of Argentina in the 21st century. And I said, stable? Archaic barter is outcompeting unstable, sophisticated banking? Stable multi-person time credits are not archaic but the barter breakthrough that the internet makes just as sophisticated as unstable multiple-person money credits from the international banks. Large businesses are now forced to take any farmer's transfer notes for tons of grain when the banking system breaks down. But how does... Oh, in the past, they knew not of such other alternatives, did they? But how does the replacement alternative work to better facilitate farmers getting rich, producing more food to base their currency on, not farmers getting government handouts to not produce food in the world that's starving for it. Reuters, grains hold their value regardless of the stability of the peso or the level of inflation. We've had a lot of people calling in, said Martinez, head of the marketing at Dinosorio, a real estate company in Cordoba province that accepts grains as payment. We're doing this because we need to keep selling and because the only real currency there is in grains. The plan allows people to swap grains for real estate like apartments.
he said. But again, there was no explanation of how the actual swapping transaction was facilitated by the alternate bank swap accounting, and nothing on the paper time creditos notes accepted at the smaller local fairs, proving that farmers' notes for tons of grain are the most powerful paper money in the realm. Reuters, a veritable supermarket, fear of banks. Farmers have bartered in the past in small deals for basic supplies. Now they can swap for a variety of goods. They're swapping for everything. I've bought trucks, machinery, and even an insurance policy against hail, said Nestor Roulette, a farmer in Cordoba. The local unit of U.S.-based agriculture Monsanto said swaps accounted for half of its sales last year. Poor! And I say each Argentinian has bought a wheelbarrow to carry around the grain to spend. Imagine the line of us at the theater, everybody with their wheelbarrow of grains. See, he doesn't explain it's a currency. <laughs> So, Reuters, it's been our solution in order to continue operating during such an unstable year. Thanks to the swap system, we are selling our goods, said Federico Overeggio, head of the public and government relations at Monsanto, Argentina. And I said, thanks to the swap system, which is never explained. They have been used. They've been saved. Thanks to the Let's Anti-Poverty Lifeboat, they've been saved. Thanks to Heloisa Primavera and her trucking, the Red Global the Truck Group, they've been saved. Reuters. In the last fiscal year, Monsanto took in enough grain through swaps to fill 22 ships, each carrying 50,000 tons for a staggering total of 1.1 million tons. Depending on commodity prices in the coming months, next year the number of ships could reach 44, representing around 80% of Monsanto's local sales in alternate currency. So that's one, I'm saying 1.1 million tons for just Monsanto. That grain is being mentioned as their international numeraire standard. Like I predicted, accommodations would evolve as the international numeraire for personal internet trading. Does not detract from the fact that other farmers are also issuing personal alternative currency based on chickens and cattle for local consumption, if not yet for international distribution. Reuters. U.S. car automaker Daimler Chrysler said Argentina's farmers can now buy cars with grain to help the ailing auto industry. Gee, why not do that in the States? Farmers who have seen a spurt in earnings due to devaluation fear putting profits in banks due to a freeze on deposits put in place to protect the fragile banking system. The freeze has been partially lifted as of Monday, November 25th. The farmers I know have almost no money in banks apart from what they need to pay operating expenses. People are afraid what could happen. Commodities offer the only protection against financial uncertainty right now, a trader said. Firms like Monsanto, Bayer, Ford, Toyota, General Motors, among others, accepted 3.5 million tons of grain for part of their sales, according to private data. Despite the large volume of grains being accepted for businesses not dedicated to the grain trade, the good are not handed over directly to the company. Instead, farmers negotiate the amount of grains they must deliver and to which port. So I said, finally, an inkling of the paperwork involved. Farmers don't need wheelbarrows anymore when they go shopping. But how do the ordinary citizens go shopping without their wheelbarrows of grain? Reuters, the payment can be made without the transfer having to transform the grains into pesos and conduct the transaction through a bank, said Mario Gilbert, a commercial manager at Toyota. And I say, throughout all of mankind's history, the economic bottleneck has been farmers having to convert their grain into banknotes as collateral for loans to conduct transactions through the bank, giving banks complete control over the prices farmers could be ripped off with. Thanks to the alternative mystery swap system, they cut out the middleman and keep it all for themselves, with only a fair one-time service charge to the operators of the alternative mystery system who facilitated the transaction. Reuters, the growth of the swap business has forced many companies to follow the local grain market on a daily basis. We have to sort of transform ourselves into grain traders in order to adapt. It's hard to grasp using a a good as a medium of exchange. There's no precedent for it. It's not common to buy an automobile with another good, said Alberto Garcia Carmona, a local head of car maker General Motors. Garcia Carmona said it took a while to explain the swap system to executives at GM headquarters in the United States. JCT, so what's so hard to understand about a receipt worth a ton of grain when you know the worth of the ton of grain on the world market? 
But if the American automakers had started accepting tons of grain seven years ago, like in Argentina, they wouldn't be broke now. So Reuters, agricultural machinery firms like John Deere, Deutz in Germany, New Holland, receive grains for about half the machinery they sell. It's the only type of financing that exists on the market because the state banks don't offer credit lines and those that our own firms used to offer no longer exist, said Eugenio Valencio, head of the Association of Argentine Tractor Makers. And I end by saying it's the only alternative to the financing by state banks. And no one bothered to explain how that alternative mystery bank worked so others could follow their example. I would think Canadian farmers would also love GM and Ford to accept their IOUs for wheat that they now can't sell.